Good morning, San Diego. You just are not getting enough of us. And I am Brian Garrity. I am with Keller Williams San Diego Signature. Today, taking the spot of our illustrious host, Derek Evans, here on Smarter San Diego. So I'm very humbled to be the guest host today. Well, Derek's not here. It's always fun being here. I love you guys. Love being, bringing all kinds of content to you guys. Whether it be pop culture, whether it be real estate, whether it be politics, we all know how that fun, much fun that is. Whether it be about socks. I mean, we talk about everything on our shows. But that's Big Daddy Live. Today you're here for Smarter San Diego. So welcome everybody and we love our audience. I thought an interesting topic for today, especially especially in the Smarter um, Avenue. I'm tired of this, when I, want to grow, when I grow up, I want to be a real estate agent. Because it kind of occurred to me, I don't know, this morning when I was getting ready, and I've been thinking about it the last couple of days. Do people think when they're a kid they want to grow up and be a real estate agent? Now, I understand there's people that grow up in real estate families where mom and dad are real estate agents or they're in the real estate industry. So maybe you have that fairy dust, that real estate fairy dust that's sprinkled on you, and you're like, this is what I'm going to be when I grow up. But I think a lot of us maybe didn't see the real estate profession coming. It's a blessing. It's a great profession. It's also a very difficult profession. So I thought, how do I translate this and make sure we're hitting all the decades, my dinosaur decade, I'm 54. I'll bring some young ones on and we'll really talk about what is it? What was that impetus? What made you want to be a real estate agent? In the United States, there are 1.3 million real estate agents. 1.3 million, that's staggering. That was as of the end of 2018. My God, if they've added more, shoot me now. But it's, it's, you could throw a rock and hit somebody who has a real estate license in the, in the head. And the key to that is who chose real estate as a profession rather than a hobby? Um, and we'll talk about all that stuff because all of that stuff is gonna matter to you as the consumer when you're making a choice about who do I hire as my real estate professional? What is it that drove people to be in real estate? Why are people in real estate? And everybody's answers are different. You'll always hear the canned answer is, I want to make the dream of home ownership happen for people. That's a true statement. That's a true statement on my behalf. And I, I know with many of my colleagues and the people that are my inner circles, that's a true statement for them as well. But deeper than that, deeper than that, I love helping people. Um, in law, I was helping people. Doctors are helping people. People who work at a gas station are helping people. So dig deeper, dig deeper. What was it about real estate? And maybe that resonates for you as a consumer, but I know for me, one thing I would really want to know if I was hiring a real estate agent, other than all the credentials that you should already have to be the best of the best, would be find out. What made you want to go into real estate? What, what ticks your clock? You know, what makes that happen? So today, again, we have two youngins, two molecules, as I like to call them, on my show. Uh, we have Jonathan Cohen Kurzrock from Garrity Group, and Ryan Alvey from Garrity Group. And I want their perspective. So we have Molecule 1, Molecule 2, and then you have Dinosaur. <laughs> so I, I really want to figure out, like, what was it? And a lot of times, really, to talk about real estate endlessly it can be tiring for people. But I think when people are watching, people that are in our profession that are watching, what was it? What was it that impetus? Were you six years old and did you want to become a real estate agent? I don't know. That just has been striking me lately. It's like, I don't believe many people were thinking that. I think they wanted to be an astronaut or a ballerina, male or female, I suppose. But I'm just saying, I, I don't, the, the kinds of things. I never wanted to be an astronaut. And I, I don't know. But I always wanted to be like a teacher. Oh, teachers work hard. And for the salaries they get, I, guys, we have to support. We've got to fix our teaching community rabbit trail number one on wanting to be a real estate agent. What was it that drove you into wanting to be a real estate agent, Jonathan? You want me to spearhead it or Ryan? All right, you said my name first. Yeah. Um, my real estate, getting into real estate, no, was not six and said, I'll be a realtor one day. Uh, and it really didn't come about until 24, 23, that I thought um, I would actually get into real estate. My story into it's kind of deeply personal. I don't know if I've ever actually ever told you about it, Brian, but uh, back in 2015, um, we received a phone call one day that my 100-year-old grandfather had like fallen and he went to the hospital. And the guy was built like an ox, strongest man ever. 
So him going to the hospital is very surprising for us. And so my mom says, hey, can you get on the plane the next day and go spend some time with him? A week with him. A week turned into five weeks. Unfortunately, he passed in the hospital. He actually got fully better from the fall, but caught something inside the hospital. And then, um, yeah. So it was a true blessing for me to be able to spend that time with him. Mm -hmm. um, but the, yeah. Um, so yeah, the way, so the way I got into real estate then was afterwards, my mom asked me to help probate the estate. And going through that process and then meeting the realtors throughout that process when we eventually sold the home and helping sell the home really got me interested in saying, hey, this is really interesting stuff, I kind of like it. And so that's really what brought me into real estate. And then while in real estate, I've, what I've come to really love, and it's kind of like what you were talking about earlier when people say, oh, to help people with the dream of home ownership. Mm -hmm. But it really is special. Every, everyone that I've worked with, it's really special when you sell someone a home and you're, you, go to, you go and visit them and they say, Jonathan, we hope you make a thousand people as happy as you've made us today. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I get that. That, that, that I totally understand. It resonates. Yeah. So that's, that's my story. That's how I got into real estate. That's why I'm still here uh, through thick and thin. And yeah, I really love the business. Um, a lot of people love looking at homes. I love looking at homes too, all day. I love showing homes. I love getting people into the home. I love the negotiations, every single aspect of it. So there is, and, that, and that's something I want to be a real estate agent when I grow up, which is our, our topic today. But also part of that is what translates into making people an excellent real estate agent. Because I think the throw the rock, hit a real estate agent in, in the head. There, there are so many of us, which really, if you look at how many people actually transact or do business, it is a very small number compared to like 24,000 licensees and like 900 of us do 10 or more transactions a year, 2,000 of us are in top one or 2%. So it, it, it's staggering when you look at it that way. But real estate to me like should never have been looked at or viewed as a part-time gig. And I think that's where the disconnect comes because just like law is a profession, just like medicine is a profession, just like finance or accounting are professions, real estate is a profession. I, and I feel there's a, a weird disconnect there. It's not, it's not some easy job. It's not, oh, I got a $20,000 check and look at what those real estate agents make. For the people that do it right, and there's no one sitting in this room, including myself, and I'll own it, no ego, it's reality. People who really dig in and do it right and take care of their clients, not only is that heartwarming, because for me, it's, is the check great? Yes, it, just like any job, the check is great. But at the end of the day, seeing what we can do, how we impact others, how we change people's lives, making the dream of homeownership. I don't know, there's something, and yes, I a million percent support that. But at the same time, I think there needs to be a digger, deeper digger, deeper drill down, dig down, dig down. It's early, guys. It's so early, it's like 10, 15, or 10 o'clock in the morning. But I'm just saying, dig down, dig deep, find out, and make sure like that person, that profession, the one that you're hiring, you, you have to have all the professional credentials. You have to have the experience. You have to have the expertise. But it's, it's all the things you're saying. The, the, there's many elements to real estate, a lot that people don't know or don't see, um, and it's unfortunate. Because I, I only want people out there to hire the best real estate agent for you. Me, possibly. Jonathan, possibly. Ryan, possibly. Whoever it is, I don't care. It could be Ricky Silver. It could be anybody out there that is a real estate agent. Bridget Potterton. I don't care. There's plenty of them. Sonia Peterson. Sonia Salzberg. I can keep going on and on and on, naming so many fabulous, wonderful people that I love that are in real estate. But more importantly, the consumers watching this, I want them to understand, like, hire somebody that's passionate about it, too. Passionate as well as competent. Those two things generally go together because people are generally not passionate, but they're not competent in it. Think about that. All right, let's talk to Ryan a little bit and find out why Ryan went into real estate. Uh, why real estate? Um, I'm actually an HGTV junkie. So I always watched all the shows, House Hunters. I was like, oh, this looks easy. Like, <laughs> there can, you go. I There's the joke in the morning. Three, <laughs> There's the humor in the morning. I love that. Show three houses, get a contract signed, and it's all good. <laughs> no, Obviously, yeah. I've come to realize quickly. I mean, that's what I pictured nah. real estate. I pictured it as easy, just like HGTV. You show a few houses, and someone buys it. Like, that's what I thought. 
and coming to realize like obviously in the HGTV you see them like making their dreams come true you see them helping families find their forever homes the remodels everything that they do I love the fixer uppers then everything so that's what I thought I was getting into and then obviously coming to the realization <laughs> that right, wow. is really really Oopsie. really hard <laughs> like there's so much more to it than yeah. the HGTV. HGTV makes it look glamorous. I mean, there is glam, glam to it, but it's hard work. It's a lot of work, and I feel like if you're not doing it full time, you're not. It's not fair to the consumer. No, and that that's sort of the part of like, yes, we have the title of where we're going with the show, but like more importantly, like the drill down, the like doing it part time versus full time. I'm sorry, if you're a part-time real estate agent, you should not be in real estate. It's not fair to the sellers, it's not fair to the buyers, and it's not fair to the other agents who practice full-time, take this seriously, are passionate about it, and work their tails off. We work our tails off for our people. You do not, it is a non-stop job. It is 24-7, if you're doing it right. Of course now some will be like, oh yes, but you must have the work-life balance, um, um. I could bang the booty drum all day about it. But the reality is, if I have clients, which I have several, and they're in contract or they want to be in contract, I am going to do whatever it is to get them the highest level of service and understanding and achieving their dream at all time. And it is not an eight to five job, it's not. I, I mean, right when you get into it, I don't think I ever thought it was easy. My story is a little bit different. I had some major medical stuff happen, I would, as most of you know, in law before. And I was in the, on the cancer floor at Scripps La Jolla, and had lots of people coming in and out. It didn't look like it was going to be a good result. And it really caused me to take time and think about where I was at in my life and how I thought my life was going to And my God. This was medical crisis number one many years ago, had I known. But I really did. I thought like, okay, so friends of mine that were in the real estate industry, I think they were playing a joke on me now, were like, you should just go into real estate. You will have so much more control of your time. You wouldn't be chained to a trial calendar. You would. Are you kidding me? Thank you for the advice though, and I took it. And once I was in it, I was like, did I do something to make them mad at me and they were getting back at me? But honestly, because it's super time consuming and I love it. I could work all the time, probably work nonstop all the time. I understand that may not be healthy either. I'm not here to psychoanalyze myself, but you, you can help psychoanalyze me out there. It's, it's, a, it's a great profession. If you're doing it full time, if you're doing it right, it's amazing. But you, you really, other than being dedicated, because I believe this, I, I really, the, the, you can, can you be competent? Can you be passionate about something you're not competent in? I don't. I, I don't think so. I don't. I, I don't buy it. But you can disagree all day. But but if you disagree, I want you to give me an example of why you disagree. What is something you'd be passionate about that you're not competent in? Uh, I think a lot of passions start where in things that you're not necessarily competent in, and then you have to work at it and grow at it. Okay. Uh, you're definitely ahead of the curve if you start off competent for something that you're passionate. But I think there's a lot of people, like there's a 10,000 hour rule. You find something you love and you're willing to put that 10,000 hours in, you're going to become pretty, you should become pretty competent at it. I would We're hope hoping. so. We're yeah. hoping. We're hoping. So, so I think. <laughs> I th Sometimes in real estate we see like, wow. Anyway, I digress. But yeah, I do think I do like it's very unfortunate when someone is very passionate about something, but it's not the right fit for them. That's always very like disheartening, and when you have to have a conversation with someone like, "Hey, this might not be the right thing for you," or when like you're going through a hard time and you feel like you're so competent, and you're so passionate, but you're not seeing the results. That's very hard too, yeah. and that's when you need someone to be like, "No, this is where you should be. You should keep going, keep grinding. It's al you're almost there." I mean, we've all had moments. Oh yeah. Maybe you could share one. <laughs> I could share one. Well, you know, I, I'll share whatever. I don't care. No, I mean, even even for me, I just I have think, you had trying moments in the business. Yes, real estate is real estate is definitely a roller coaster. I mean, everyone that sees like when I post on Instagram, Facebook, you're seeing highlight reels. But like we're talking about, it's it's a grind. You're going at it every day a lot of ups and downs where someone you thought was going to work with you and then they ended up working with someone else. 
or you find out that a really close friend decided to buy a home without even reaching out to you and asking for your advice. Things like that where you're just like, wow, what was the disconnect? What happened here? And you know, a lot of times friends don't want to mix business with friendship and that makes total sense. But at least give me a call, you know? At least, at least let me know, let me know, let me make sure you're being taken care of. Well, I think this, I always do. I do, but people are like, don't mix business and uh, family or friends or pleasure. But like, for me, everything is mixed. Everything is mixed. I take care of all of my people. And I, I understand that, look, real estate can be challenging. I want to say hi to my Shay, my Pacific Queen of the Northwest. If you're still on here, we love you. You know how much I love you. I'm so bad I'm not going to see you in a couple of weeks, but we'll make that happen. See, she's Pacific Queen of the Northwest out there owning real estate, our little Shay. Um, the, the thing with real estate is this. It, it is a profession. Everybody has trying moments. It, it's those who will persevere and keep going. But it's also one thing about real estate is like, I think people have to understand there's always going to be a learning curve as well. So are you willing to do that or not? How possibly could you do real estate one or two deals a year? And I've seen it. I, I know the agents that do one or two deals a year. I see what the contracts look like. I see how protracted and painful the process is. And listen, I, everybody has to have a first day. Everybody has to have a first day, period. However, at some point, you're past your first day. And when you see someone's license number and you know they've been doing it five, six, eight years and they send a contract which is half written, you, you know, that buyer may not know that that contract was bad. That seller may not know that contract was bad. But again, going back to the root fundamental of like, why real estate? What made you get into real estate? I think that's a fair question to ask while you're interviewing or interviewing agents potentially. I'd want to know, why? Do you practice real estate full time? If you don't practice real estate full time, how possibly are you going to take care of me? Possibly, how possibly? Because there's going to be too many other distractions at that other job or that other occupation or that other thing that he or she may be doing. Think about it and vet it out. Make sure that whoever you're working with does 10 or more transactions a year. Heck, 10 or more transactions for me, like that, that's not negotiable. 10 is way too low. You, you know, work with the people like myself that do 25, 30, 40, and above in transactions. You will have an experience much different than working with people that maybe don't do as much. And, and that's not a bad thing, and I feel bad even saying it because I want everybody to do well. And I mean that when I say that. Are there some ding-dongs out there? Yeah, like in any other profession. My God, but in real estate, some of them gravitate and stick. The best part is anybody who produces and is in real estate, those people percolate up real quickly. So I always feel bad, even if I have a bad agent on the other side, I want to like manage it for everybody. But then again, it goes back to that passion. Why did I go into real estate? Once I went into it, uh, coming into it from a medical crisis, really as something that I thought would make sense, and really it seemed from a timing standpoint at first, and think about how you am impact people's lives in law in a big way. And I still wanted to be able to do that in real estate. I wasn't sure the same impact would happen, but it absolutely does. The joy that you, the tears that you see, and the happy tears um, that you see when you help somebody buy a home that they've saved the last five years to get. When you sell somebody's house because now they're moving up to their next house, that elation that people have, I mean, that's off the charts. For me, that's everything. That's everything for me. Having people say like, my God, I don't know what I would have done without you, that, that, that to me, that, that rings the bell. Why, why didn't I want to be a real estate agent when I grew up? Real estate tends to get a bad rap, and it's unfortunate what it does. Bad eggs in every profession. Unfortunately, if you have a pulse and you can kind of take a test, you, you could get a real estate license. And I, I'm, the barrier to entry is low. In law, the barrier to entry is higher, much higher. There's got, there's got to be a gatekeeper. There's got to be a gatekeeper. But at the end of the day, make sure you're vetting out whoever it is you're working with. And again, the, the reason I titled this, I want to be a real estate agent when I grow up or, or along those lines is like, so when you decided to be a real estate agent, what really, what made you do that? And why are you in it? And what do you see in it? I don't know. Who else is on here that I want to say hi to? Jeannie Officer, we love you. She's in there. there. There's another real estate. Two, see, two beautiful real estate agents. There's plenty out there. There's plenty of good ones out there. Do not, do not let anyone tell you anything different. 
but dig deep on their passion, their experience, what they bring to the table, their knowledge, etc. And hello to our Allison Daniel. She's very supportive of your friend Ryan. She really yeah, is. She She's is. on she here on the regular. Yep. <laughs> what, what, so you watch HGTV. See, the people that watch HGTV, you can watch that all day. I get it. It's not, I always know how phony that is. And I can tell you a story about HGTV in a minute. Like, all of that stuff is set up. That's all a set up. I've had producers contact me. There's the one where you have the buyers and they look at, they act like they're looking at three houses and pick one. Well, the truth behind that show is, because they've tried to cast me on it twice, is the buyers have already bought that house probably six months to a year before. They then set it up. You have the buyer's house, the one that they've actually purchased. They'll take them to two more houses. They'll act like the house that they're living in now has not been purchased by them. And then they'll go through the utility of the show, showing the buying process, what happens. They really don't show. In a half hour, you really cannot convey what the buying or selling process looks like. But just know a lot of that stuff is staged. So when you're seeing it and it looks like, well, geez, they went to three houses, picked one, and called it a day. Does that happen? Rarely. But when that does happen, I'm excited for those people because that's a great thing. Anyone who needs to look at, I say, 10 or more properties, there's a disconnect between you and the real estate agent. There's a disconnect in motivation, for example, when you're on the buy side. Um, it, there just is. You shouldn't have to show somebody 40 properties. There's a weird disconnect there. Mom's on. Oh, Lisa Alvey. Well, that's a good deal. Hi, Mom. Hi, Kentucky. We love you. I got um, the... But 10 or more houses, and when I say that, and when I'm talking about the disconnect, if you have an agent who's connected with you, who drilled down because they were passionate about being a real estate agent, now we're talking about the buy process. If you're having to look at more than 10 houses, there's a disconnect. It's either that you're not helping the client like narrow down exactly what they need. It could be that maybe the client's really not serious about buying at that point. In that case, for me, for example, as a full-time professional, I'd be like, bye, you need to work with another agent. It's not because I don't, I'll show them 20 houses. I don't care, but I want to make sure that everything is definitive. Everything between us, there's an understanding, a connection, et cetera. Do you guys understand that about why it's so important that you have a connection with the client? Not just outside of a skill level, but what has been your experience with the clients when you have a connection. You know how emotional you get when you sell somebody a house. Yeah. I think there's a huge difference between someone that I've had a cursory conversation with and then start showing homes and the people where I really sat down with them and said like, hey, what is really important to you? Why is that important to you? And how is that different from what you have right now? And once you start to kind of eke that out of people and really learn about what they want and what they're looking for and where they want to be, like, you're right. You don't need to be looking at tens of houses um, and I know I know a few agents where they say they only show five houses that still scares me I'm like no we can we can look at a few more but at the end of the day like when you when you really describe what you're looking for it, and you say what your standards are for something you're gonna be able to really hone in on what you want and just take out all the trash not even have to look at it yeah sometimes I've had, I've had people look at one or two and buy but we're so tethered and connected and, and so vetted out that like, I know they don't need to see more because like, if the one or two checks all the boxes and I can make that work and we can negotiate it, I'm all about it. So there's that factor. The other factor with having a really good agent is making sure that agent is always working on your behalf. Um, and I've been harping on it and I will keep harping on it. There needs to be community in real estate between the agents. Um, you, you're not going to trial. Okay, so you're not going to be having a, ripping each other's faces off. I will, if we need to, if the other agent is not seeming to step up to the plate, but that's not getting anything done. We're not in a court of law. We're not there to get you know some kind of a judgment against one of the other parties. There's no right or wrong. It should be a collaborative process. I have my listing. Jonathan brings me a buyer. We should be able to work so that both parties' goals are satisfied. It's not about a takedown. It's not about a, like, let's get in a contract at this price and then we'll do our home inspection and we'll find every little thing wrong with it so we can ratchet them down to that price. Are there agents that pull that? Yes, all day. That, that's not gonna happen on one of my listings. So if you're one of the agents that do that, you wanna write on one of my listings, just be prepared that's not gonna happen. I'm just saying though, if 
you have people that are skilled in the profession and know what they're doing, those things do not happen. I'm giving you just a few highlights about it. But passion is one of them. I'm very passionate about what we do, and I love what we do. And I think anyone watching, I want to thank you guys for being here today. And thank you for participating and hearing about passion. You guys both have passion for real estate. You're part of Garrity Group, Keller Williams Signature. So hey. Yeah, you have to have passion on. to be part of your team. And the thing like I've learned on that is like the relationships are very important. Not everyone's a match. And if you don't match up with your clients, then you move on. Like you you have to match and you have to have a chemistry and you have to get each other. You gotta connect. That's something I've learned about being with the group. You have to have a true passion for yeah. it. Because really if I don't have a connection or Jonathan doesn't have a connection or Ryan doesn't have a connection or Morgan R and D doesn't have a connection within the clients we're working with, that's okay, then you go on to the next agent or the next group. We, we have a very specific way of practicing. We're very relationship based. Um, and it's just very important to me, very important to me, that at the end of the day, no matter who we're working with, nothing, and I do mean nothing, comes before the client, zero. It's the, the client is your principal, you have a fiduciary relationship with that person, there should be not one thought in your head other than, what am I doing to serve the client? What am I doing to get the client exactly what they want? What am I doing to make this as drama free as possible? Because nobody needs any more drama in their life, trust me. I say drama free zone all day. Uh, there's people that like to create drama. Let's not create it around real estate. All right, thank you guys for being here today. I really appreciate it. I love being on Smarter and subbing for my buddy, my visionary, my mentor, Derek Evans. He will be back. And I'll be up on the next segment with a very special guest, Melissa Sophia. So stay tuned, folks. We'll be back.